All right, moving on, we're now going to look at the digestive system of a ruminant, and we have here the cow. The other ruminants, examples of other ruminants, would be like uh, sheep and goats. So the food is ingested from the mouth, and the first structure that passes through after the mouth would be the esophagus. There's some amount of chewing that occurs in the mouth, and that will help to break the food down into smaller um, pieces. But it takes a long time for the animal to break down the, the grass that it will consume. After it's ingested in the mouth, the food will go down into the esophagus and then it goes into the rumen. Um, ruminants, they, they have four chambered stomachs. The four stomachs are, that are listed here would be the rumen, the reticulum, omasum, and abomasum. So the food will enter into the rumen first. So what happens in the rumen? The rumen acts as a storage organ. The rumen is the largest part of the digestive tract. So when the food is uh, ingested, it first goes into the rumen. There are bacteria that are present in the rumen, and these bacteria will begin the digestion of cellulose. The cellulose is formed mainly to the cell wall of the plant material. So we do not, animals, um, mammals do not produce enzymes that can digest the cellulose. And cellulose is a carbohydrate, a form of carbohydrates that contains a lot of energy. For us human beings, we cannot digest the cellulose, so the cellulose just passes through the digestive system and it leaves. So the bacteria that are present here will break down the cellulose and they will produce even some amount of vitamin B. And that can be absorbed and taken in by the animal and used as a form of nutrient. So the partially digested grass is then passed into the next structure and that's called the reticulum. Whatever large particles, whatever large bulk of the grass that was consumed that's in the reticulum, that will now be regurgitated. The animal will bring it up back into its mouth and it will chew it. So the cod is really a ball of regurgitated food. So sometimes you will see the animal, the, the ruminant, they will sit down and they will start to chew the food because the food will go into the reticulum as mentioned and then the part that was not fully digested will come upwards into the mouth and it will take its, the animal will take its time and chew the food properly so that it will become smaller. After the animal chew that cud, it will go back into the stomachs, pass through into the reticulum once again. So when the food is now partially digested after it has been chewed again in the, in the mouth, it goes into the next structure that's called the omasum. In the omasum, the excess um, liquid is, be, is removed. Water and some amount of fatty acids are, that are present now will also be removed. And the remaining solid that remains will go into the abomasum. And the abomasum is considered as a true stomach. Why is it considered as a true stomach? It is because in this structure that the animal will start to produce enzymes. It will produce gastric juice to be more specific. And the gastric juice will contain the enzyme um, pepsin that will start the digestion of whatever protein is present. It will break down the proteins into amino acid. The amino acid, which will be the smallest um, structure or substructure of the, in the stomach, renin is also produced. The remaining food will now pass into the duodenum. So as we go through this digestive system of the ruminant, you would want to compare the digestive system of ruminant to the digestive system of humans. And you will learn about the digestive system of humans in biology or human and social biology. So the first structure of the small intestine is a duodenum and in the duodenum more enzymes will be released and those enzymes will continue the digestion of the proteins, of the carbohydrates and the um, fats that may be present. In the duodenum you have similar digestion as you would have in other mammals. Also in the duodenum the liver will produce a bile and the bile will enter the, into the duodenum and the bile helps to digest fats. When we say that the bile helps to digest fat, it doesn't mean that the bile directly breaks down the fat. What the bile does is that it breaks the fat particles or the fat molecules into smaller and smaller pieces. So when the fat molecule is in a smaller and smaller um, um, structures, the enzymes will have a larger surface area and the, the enzymes can catalyze the process at a faster rate. Good, so moving on now to the large intestine, but before we mention, we talk anything about the large intestine, you should remember also that the last section of the small intestine is called the ileum, and in the ileum, final digestion occurs. And when we say final digestion, we mean that um, the remaining undigested food, probably some 
starch, uh, some proteins and, and some fats that might be present there, they will be digested because in the idiom, some amount of enzymes are also produced and those enzymes will ensure whatever has been undigested will now get a chance to be broken down into simpler substances. At the ileum also, absorption takes place. And this is very important to remember. In the ileum, whatever nutrient has been fully digested, they are absorbed through the walls of the ileum. So moving on back to the large intestine. In the large intestine, mainly the water, or the water is absorbed into the, um, the blood vessels that surrounds the large intestines. Then we have the rectum, and here is where the undigested food is temporarily stored until they are ingested or removed by the anus. So that summarizes the process of digestion in the ruminant. Um, to summarize, one of the main things that you need to remember is that in ruminants, they have four chambered stomachs. Um, so as the food is that ingested, the food enters into the rumen, the food is stored in the rumen, there's some bacteria in the rumen, and the bacteria will break down the cellulose that are present there. The cellulose is in the grass or whatever leaf or foliage that the animal would consume. The cellulose is part of the cell wall. So to break down that, you need this bacteria. The animal does not have the enzymes or the capability to break it down on its own. So it relies on those bacteria. Those are symbiotic bacteria. After the rumen, the, the food enters into the reticulum. And in the reticulum, the food is kind of sorted out. The larger parts of the food, which is, has not been able to break down properly and is not digested properly from the rumen, will be regurgitated and it will enter into the mouth. The animal will chew its cud, as we would say. The animal will chew its cud, and then when it is broken down further, it will be absorbed and it will enter into the omasum. When it enters the omasum, the water will be removed and whatever nutrients have, have been, um, whatever nutrients is present there, they will also, some of it will also be absorbed. It will then enter into the abomasum, which is a true stomach. It, 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 abomasum releases gastric juice, which contains hydrochloric acid, which contains uh, pepsin, which contains renin. The, the food then further moves on to the duodenum, which is part of the small intestine. In the duodenum, further digestion occurs, bile is released, and uh, as it moves down, more and more digestion occurs, and the final digestion occurs in the ileum. Mm -hmm.